is up what is up everybody we are back at it again with another lullaby stories with this week's guest we got figment in the house i've been wanting to interview him for a while pretty excited to do it um make sure you're liking subscribing and commenting down below about any questions that you may have about this wonderful podcast um exclusively on electro step network chris how the fuck we doing today we're good we're good i'm happy to be here Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Good to hear. Good to hear, man. Um, so so let's get into this, man. Let's get right into this. So you when did you start making music and uh what came about? Uh how did the Figment project come to be? So I started producing about eight years ago, but I've been DJing since I was like 16. So um, you know, at first I went by like DJ May. I was doing like house music and like top 40 stuff, just basically just DJing on virtual DJ at first. And um my uh name came about because my sister she was um dating this guy that got me real big into music at the time and his last name was figgle so i came up with the name figment and when he passed away i kind of just kept going with with that name kind of as like his you know memory essentially damn okay so it's like a memento then uh kind sort of. of to yeah. respect the fallen um no that's pretty cool so you said that it was your sister's boyfriend is your sister older yeah, she's older than me, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, like, when did he start showing you music? Because it seemed like it was a very, like, important time of your life to shift. It was, this. yeah, no, it was. It was, like, I, God, I'd have been, like, maybe 13, 14 years old. Oh, you know, I'm, tw- I'm 29 now, so, like, you know, I kind of dabbled into that, you know, at a very young age, and it just kept going. Gotcha, gotcha. Hell, yeah. So, so I asked a couple of people that I've interviewed before on this podcast the same question, right? What did you get into first? Did you get into the producing side of things first? Did you get into the DJing? Like, you got the name, right? And then what was next? So, I got into the DJ portion first. Um, you know, I, I guess I downloaded Virtual DJ and I started working on that first. Just kind of just coming up with mashups, you know, trying to, like, learn as much as I can. Doing, like, the beat grids, just trying to, like, kind of just dabble into it. And um, once I started playing my first couple of shows, I was like, all right, now I kind of get into the production side of it because I don't want to be that one DJ just doesn't have his own thing. So it it, it kind of came naturally, but, um, you know, I'm still it's still a learning battle. I do. I learn something new every day when I'm producing. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Question for you then. So when you were DJing, were you already DJing other than name Figment and just didn't produce yet? Or did you pr- did you DJ under a different name? And then so, once you got into producing? Yeah, so I DJed under a different name. I was DJ May at first because my last name is May. So I was going with that. And then um, once, you know, I started getting kind of like bigger with, you know, doing like dubstep and trap and all that stuff. That's when I kind of figured I need to make an actual alias name. Gotcha, gotcha. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. So, so we got Figment from a person that showed you all of this music. Now, what kind of music did they even show you that you're like, oh shit, this is like the best? So, like, they it, it started off with like they showed me like Adventure Club, they showed me um, <laughs> Sandstorm, like you know, uh, kind of like a bunch of throwbacks, and it um, made me kind of fall in love with this type of music because like it was incorporated with like you know, the sad melodic elements and also like, you know, some of the metal influence stuff, like, you know, with Skrillex from first to last and stuff like that. So like it, it kind of intertwined everything I listened to at the time and what he also showed me. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah. Okay. Dope. So like you were getting into adventure time around that time or adventure club, I should say. Adventure club. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so, um, no, that's really cool, man. So like you are hearing adventure club at that time and then now here you are like fast forward you, later getting the work fast with them forward stuff, getting yeah. to work with them and stuff yeah like tell me a little bit about that so like it was uh it's honestly a really cool moment like um you know i i did a song called kill them all that came on havoc records years ago and i saw that because you know back then on soundcloud you could see who likes your songs and who like you know repost that and all that stuff i saw that they liked it I was like, all right, I mean, I'm going to shoot my shot here. And, you know, I sent him a message, you know, started talking to him, you know, send the music. And then, you know, eventually came into the time where I got to work with. Them. It's like, it's kind of a surreal moment. Like I'm getting to work with these like people that I literally looked up to and, you know, getting noticed by them, like, you know, being on subsidia by, you know, excision, you know, being noticed by all these different people. It, uh, it's a very surreal moment. It doesn't feel real at times. 
So like, you know, it's still, um, <laughs> still getting used to it. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. So like, that's super cool that you like got to reach out to them and whatnot. What do you think? I'm surprised they even answered. <laughs> right. I mean, Hey, look, like, I just, I just, I was just like, you know, I'm gonna shoot my shot here. He's like, they, I saw that they liked the song. I was like, all right, let's see what, um, let's see what I can see if I can get an answer. <laughs> right. Right. No, for sure. For sure. Well, I guess my next question then would be then like, you know, you, you had these things, you have Subsidia, you, you worked with Excision, you've done stuff for If Adventure Club, right? What do you think set you up to get to that point where you're getting those opportunities, right? What do you think was the biggest, like, were you just shitting out good tracks like 24 seven where you like, what were you doing that were, they were, they were, they responded back to you, right? I think it was just consistency. Like at that time I was consistently putting out music, consistently playing shows, consistently being, you know, active on social media. Like that's a big part as, you know, we're not just artists. We have to also like be, you know, interactive with everything when it comes to socials, excuse me. So like, I think at that time I was just consistently putting out music on different labels. God, you know, you, you, you miss 99% of the shots you don't take. So like if you're, you know, constantly sending demos out constantly, you know, and group chats or discords with the, you know, with these, you know, labels, you know, eventually at some point you're going to be on there. Right, right, right. It's just a matter of just keep going, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah, never give up on it. Just keep, keep pushing. <laughs> keep pushing, keep pushing. So, so with that kind of thing, tell me some of the, like, you said that you started playing shows first, right? Tell me what it was, what it was like for you to play those first couple of shows that like now that you're figment and like, you know, oh God, like it was, was the pressure was on, like because oh God, like shit, it was, it was god awful. I was I was horrendous. Like the first show I ever played was like, it was back in um Philadelphia because I'm originally from Philadelphia. I played Park Ave and it was it was god awful. <laughs> so like it it you know it took time because like I didn't have the equipment to learn. So I was really learning as I was going. Like you know all I learned off of was my computer when I was doing virtual DJ. So like it took time to really get used to all that equipment. And then eventually over time, it just came, you know, muscle memory and second nature. Like, you know, it was, it was bad. It was God awful. My first few, few shows. I can imagine. I can imagine like, luckily, at least for my journey, right? Like I noticed the more I DJ because I was in the same, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you uh, before, like not yeah. having any decks and everything. Right. But like the thing that's beautiful to me is that like, no matter what decks you touch, they're more or less the same. Yeah. Get oh, absolutely. Go. And that's like perfect. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, I mean, for instance, you can go from, you know, an XDJ and grab a Denon, you know, it's, they, they do the same, the same thing. It's just, once you get comfortable with it, you kind of know what, you know, what you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. So, so how do you go, like, say for instance, you got a show, right? What's your approach to setting up for that show? Like, do you, do you curate your sets? Do you just kind of play on the fly? Like, does so, the de event depend on if you curate a set or not? I mean, I guess it really depends on, like, who I'm playing for. Like, you know, if it's, like, a headline show for myself, then, you know, I kind of just, I wing it. <laughs> like, I, I basically, about 95, like, 95% 95 of my sets are literally just, just free handing everything. I know what I open with. I know what I close with. So, you know, everything is really just on the fly. And I think it's more fun that way because like you still, as an artist, you still have to have fun with these things. Like, you know, you're still a DJ at the end of the day and you're still a producer at the end of the day. So if it's something that you're, you know, pre-making your sets, I feel like it's not as fun as doing it on the fly because like that's the element of it. So like, you know, most of my sets are always like just free-handed um the i think there's only been a, a few times where i kind of curated something like when uh we played for k-bomb you know i kind of had to go more open format than what i would normally play like you know i had to go from you know dubstep to you know house music to jersey club like kind of little all over than what i would normally do but you know you got to kind of feed off the crowd what they're what they're vibing with so you know if the crowd is liking more heavier stuff you go with the more heavier stuff Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I, I actually remember that show pretty well. It's funny because I remember coming up on stage, like just tapping you. I'm like, Hey, by the way, and I show you a text <laughs> from the promoter. I'm like, yo, like homies, uh, tour manager is asking you to like turn it down just a little bit. 
and the look on your face whenever you saw whenever i saw you read it you just kind of looked at me and shrugged your shoulders and just kept going <laughs> i mean you got you got me when i was literally just locked in i was i was in the zone i was locked in then so i was like, like the, crowd, the crowd was enjoying it you know uh, you you know every everybody seemed to have a great time so i was just you know doing my job and making sure everybody had a great time absolutely absolutely i mean shit even the promoter himself was like hey man yeah you killed it like yeah like, <laughs> like if anything I mean, he was I, just it, dropping it, the it, line to you i mean it, what, what made me happy is that you know it made him kind of go a little heavier too so like yeah you know, like his sets are like you know they're very flow very melodically very future based and like he was very he was emotionally some, charged yeah like he, he was dropping some heavier stuff so i was like oh shit i'm like all right you know this is turned out to be something really great there you go there you go didn't he did you say that he played one of your tracks or no, no. okay no we, we we talked after the event and he um you know he wanted to like you know work on something so kind of waiting on that essentially <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. So, so you do a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. Um, you you wouldn't call yourself just a bass producer. What would you consider yourself, kind of thing? I would just consider myself as a producer. You know, as I the whole the whole point of my project. You know, when you know after I gained the name from him, like you know, he showed me every single type of genre of music. So you know, I can go from making dubstep to go to make drum and bass to go make house to melodic future bass, basically all over. You know, I don't want to put myself in a box where, you know, the only thing I make is this. So when I come out with something different, everybody's like, well, what the, what, why? You know, it, the the diversity is key when it comes to that. Cause like, I love having the fact that people are like, oh, like heavy figments back or, you know, melodic figments back. Like it, it's having that diversity down the middle where it keeps all the audience and even, you know, yourself happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd, I'd consider myself the same thing kind of thing. Like, I don't know about just a producer. I'd say more like an electronic producer since I yeah. primarily make electronic. Right. But um, with that, like being said and whatnot, it is super liberating to just make whatever the fuck you want and not be like pigeonholed into one thing. Like I can only imagine people like amorphic, angry shit only. Angry you know what shit I mean? only. That's, that's his thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like if he makes some sad shit, I thought you, bro, I thought you said yeah, English I, shit only. I like, thought you said, yeah. No, I mean, that's, you know, and, and that's that's the whole point. Like, you know, when you are developing and creating a brand, you know, it, it, that's, you basically got to stick with that. So, like, you know, if you're making, you know, angry stuff only, like, you know, that's that's what his brand is, you know, that that's his whole aesthetic. So, like, you know, when, when you are doing your artist development, which I like, I like to call that, is where you are finding your sound, you're finding the branding that you want. So like, you know, for, for instance, with mine, like I, I literally do a little bit of everything. So, you know, there's, there's the sad part of figment and then there's the happy and then there's the angry part of figment. So like, you know, it's all telling a story behind it. And, you know, when you're doing something like that, like we're, we're basically great storytellers. Like, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're trying to basically create something for you guys to, you know, envision essentially. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. No, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, back to like your career, right? As a producer, as a DJ and all that stuff. Um, what are you, what are some things that you kind of like were not expecting from the industry? It was not prepared and wish you could have been prepared for a little bit more. Like what's one of those? I, mean, I don't know. There's, there's a there, lot of things. There, there, there's a lot. I don't know. The I mean, hardest. I don't, I don't want to like, you know, shit, shit on the industry. Cause like, there's really, you know, it, the industry is always constantly evolving. You right. know, we, we are definitely not in the same industry. It was, you know, five, six years ago, you right. know, it, it's constantly evolving. You know, we, we, you know, have to be, you know, content, you know, creators, we have to, th there's a lot of things that go involved. And I wish I would have known that, you know, eight, nine years ago that, you know, we would have to do, you know, constant videos and all that type of stuff. Cause you know, at, at least back then, the only thing it was was music. It was just music. Yep. If your music was popping, then you know you, you you were basically getting all the opportunities that you need. So you know, once you get to where we're at now, you know you you have to. There, there's a lot that goes with being an artist now. There there really is. Gotcha, gotcha. No, like I know I know my mistakes is that like you know I don't host a lot or I do I don't do a lot of like you know TikTok videos or create content. Yeah, that's something I'm working on with my team as well. So, 
there, 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 there's a lot that goes involved in it now. Speaking of team, that's a, that's a great thing that you brought up, right? So speaking of team, right? How long, all right. When did you think that you were ready for the team? One, two, how did you go about finding it? And three, do, did you like, was it one of those things that when the opportunity came, you just took it or you actively searched out your team whenever you thought you were ready? So, I mean, it, it comes to you. Like I, I tell every artist, like, don't, don't go out searching for it. Like it will come to you when you're ready, you know, you're ready. So, you know, when, when I first started, you know, I did everything by myself, you know, until right. I got to the point, maybe I think it was like four years ago. Um, I played a show in Baltimore and the promoter that was running that event came out to me and we started talking for a little bit and he, you know, he wanted to pick me up as an artist for managing. So, you know, he, you know, helped me out a little bit with, you know, my career and stuff like that. And then, you know, later on down the road, you know, it, we, you know, separated and then, you know, somebody else picked me up and it's just been helping my project ever since, you know, you, I, I, I don't think you should actively search for it. I feel like it will come to you when you're ready. Right. Right. No, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Cause you know, some, sometimes a lot of these, what I've been seeing a lot of lately is these people that, you know, they don't even have like 500 followers on anything kind of thing. And they're already yeah. looking for like a manager or they already have one or anything like that kind of thing. And I'm just sitting there like, but is that necessary though? It just feels like more hands in the pot. You know what I mean? Like, are they helping you helping you or are they just like there? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, like, I, I always say, like, don't, don't worry about, you know, how many followers somebody has. Cause like, right. you can, you can meet an artist that has, you know, 300 followers and they're making the, the craziest music you ever heard. Absolutely. Of. Like, you, you know, there's, there, there, there's always levels to it. So, like, you know, if somebody wants to come to you and pick you up and try to help you, like, you know, I, I always say take the opportunity, but just know what you're getting into. Right right like it's it, it, it this this industry is really about like who you know essentially sometimes so like if somebody wants to help you you know further your career and see you succeed in it that's how you develop that team so i mean you know if if that's what you want to do then you know go for it right absolutely so so let me ask you this about the subsidious stuff right when you got to the level that you're on subsidia, right? Were you already like, were you still just doing stuff yourself? Did you already have a little bit of a team, a little momentum outside of like, you know what I mean? Like people helping you. No, that was, that was just me. <laughs> just you. Hell um, yeah. yeah. Like I, I, um, you know, I was very fortunate to, you know, get contacted by them and, uh, release with them. The, um, I, I was releasing music prior to that on different labels. Like I released on Gridlocked. I released on, um, uh, was it Havoc Records, Chase the Sound, AO Trip, a uh, bunch of different things. So, you know, the the Excision team really helped me out with further in my career with that because, you know, it put me on a bigger platform to, you know, showcase my talents. But from that, you know, I got a lot more opportunities. You know, I met a lot more people and networked a lot more and created, you know, a community for myself. Oh yeah. So, so getting on those labels, isn't an easy thing to do, right? Like, oh, no. how do you, how do you keep yourself from getting discouraged whenever you submit these demos and you either a don't hear anything back or you get rejected or one of those two. And like, how many did it actually take for you to end up on subsidia kind of thing? You know what I mean? Like yeah. how many did it take to get on any of them? Cause I'm sure it took a couple of tries. Oh no, of course. I mean, you know, it, as an artist, you should kind of already expect the rejection. Like, you know, not everybody's going to like your stuff. And, you know, when, when you send demos out to labels, you are, you're, you're trying to impress one person, that one A&R. So like, you know, it's, it's a hit or miss. So like, you know, I have countless, countless amount of songs I've sent out and like, you know, they only pick a handful of songs. Um, the, the day I got picked up, I was at the Ohio airport. I was waiting for my flight. I just played a show in um, Cincinnati. And I was sitting at the airport and I saw the email coming from the excision team and I was freaking out because like, you know, you, you don't expect to get to get emailed by the excision team. So um, I sent them like four songs, they only picked one and the song that they picked was something I didn't expect to get picked, but it, it set me up for the melodic side of Figma because everything I was releasing before them was either dubstep rhythm or um, 
like melodic dubstep. So I was able to show the future bass side and the next the next step of Figma that I wanted to, you know, everybody to see. Nice. So so you said that you got the email when you just got done playing a show in Ohio. So were you already kind of like a touring DJ at that point? Like Yeah, um, I mean it was more like regional. Like, you know, I was I was still traveling with it. Um, I wouldn't say I was like super far out yet, but I was like, you know, I was traveling Ohio, Baltimore, um, California, Texas, stuff like that. But I was like very mid tier, wasn't super high on the cards yet. Gotcha. Like direct support kind of thing. Or... Yeah. Like direct support or like, you know, um, wasn't doors, but it was like, you know, after doors and stuff like that. Right. Right. What's been, you've played a lot of shows. What's been like the most memorable slash crazy slash most fun kind of one that you can tell me about? Honestly, I'm, I'm an underground kid. So like anytime I get to do any underground things, like I'm always for it. Like, you know, we, like when I first got started, like I said, back to the Park Ave days, like, you know, we were doing stuff in somebody's basement in Temple nice. University. <laughs> so like, you know, I, I, I still always try to put on for the underground. So like anytime we did like those warehouse shows in Philly and like, you know, it there, it's something it's something amazing about seeing the underground community come in and pack out these shows at like three, four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, like the energy is there. Like they're, they're there for the music. Like they, they want to get down and dirty. Right. Oh yeah. Speaking of shows and like all these different places and whatnot, you've thrown some shows too. Like you've promoted for them kind of thing. What's yeah. it like wearing a different hat like that? Does it help you out any in your own career? Like, uh, I mean, you kind of see both sides from the artist and then the promoter. So you kind of see where, you know, things can get a little messy at times, but I think it does help you out in the aspect of like, you know, how things are supposed to run. So, you know, if you go to a show and something, you know, the, the equipment's malfunctioning or, you know, they're, um, they're asking questions, you're able to kind of like help out and fill in essentially. Nice. Nice. So you get to essentially like yeah, have a little bit better communication with everybody yeah. in a way. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so. You know, I'm assuming that Adventure Club is one of your influences. What are your other influences of your music? I mean, a lot of it's like, you know, I, I come from like the hardcore like scene too. So like a lot of metal influence, a lot of uh, pop punk influence, a lot of sad stuff. Um, you know, I, I listen to like, you know, secrets and like issues and stuff like that. So it's like very sad stuff. But, um, you know, with with other artists like you know i a big big impact is like you know slushy and like freaky um chris caden like you know chris caden and slushy kind of showed me a little bit when it came to production um my homie mike wasa he used to go by wasa he showed me a lot of production when i was first starting so like these are kind of the people that brought me into this scene essentially nice okay okay so they were they were the ones to credit for for you being figgy a little bit more a little bit yeah it's Espe like especially like you know chris caden and wasa and like slushy kind of like you know showing me a little bit here and there like it it definitely created what i am now gotcha gotcha now on the hardcore scene side of things you you actually know like a couple of bands or at least bandmates right like i think you yeah. said something about like attila right yeah, Franz and uh, well, I mean, not not a, not a, not a lot of people realize, but like Mantis used to be the drummer for Attila, so like you know those those roots in the dubstep scene go far back with the hardcore scene. Like right. you know, a lot of a lot of these dubstep people, a lot of especially the songs, really come from that. Like you know, like even Adventure Club, like they've done remixes of Taking Back Sunday. Like there's a lot of metal influence stuff in you know in EDM essentially. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think the, the biggest turn from like EDM going to the meta world had to have been Sullivan King when he first came out. Kind oh, of yeah. thing. And then ever since then you have people like phase one marshmallow and a couple of other people that have been working or Kazo has been working with these, uh, these band. It's really cool. Have you in like one time there was a tour where they had a local by the name of Wares and Memphis Mayfire was on the lineups for tour stops for Ke That's Kezo. That's like, so how the hell? And I Prevail was on some of them too, I'm pretty sure. I think so. I think I Prevail was on a few with um with Elenium. Yes, yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's just it, like it, super wild. It's, it's cool too, because like Kezo, like Kezo has done songs with like some of my favorite bands, like Bless the Fall, like, you know, they, they, they really incorporate that stuff. And like, you know, mosh pits, where did mosh pits originate from? 
right um, right you know we we brought it into you know dub the dubstep scene essentially uh, i keep saying essentially sorry <laughs> but no, yeah okay. it, they brought they brought it into the scene so like i've always felt like it goes hand in hand like especially when it comes to the production side you have those breakdowns you have those you know super heavy um drops like it it, it just goes hand in hand right right it's match made in heaven that's for sure right absolutely absolutely <laughs> but it's even cool that like you even see some like bands even go for a, like whenever they join the edm side of things right whenever they collab they they still inherit their sound but they do it a different style i love whenever they get creative like that for instance uh slander with uh bring me the horizon and black bear yeah that's you know what i mean that's not something that you would you would un, you would get from bring me the horizon song but you still know it's bring me the horizon oh absolutely you know I, mean? I mean like you can even look at um if you do you remember breathe carolina yeah so breathe carolina was a elder it was an elder emo band from like you know 2000 and i maybe more and like this i, I think i was war tour 2013 they played the song blackout at the end of it, they did a dubstep remix of this at Warp Tour, oh, and no now Bre now Breathe Carolina are house DJs. That's wild. Like they're they're literally house DJs now. So like you see a lot of these transitions of these these artists that were you know doing like you know metal, pop punk, all these things, and you see them now in the dubstep scene or in the EDM scene. Like it, it's kind of cool to see the crossover. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and like then the, big, like, the also... biggest one was Skrillex when he came from first to last. To... Right. Yeah, that was insane times right there, like for sure. Like I still remember first of the year and all that shit. Like as soon as it was coming out, kind of thing. The music video was crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was actually music... the first time. Yeah, that I was back when Dubstep up. actually had music videos. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Fucking bangerang. Bangerang. Uh... Man, there were so many music videos at that time. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, Flux made a few. Yep. Yeah, like, it was some good times, man. Some good times. Still are some good times. Now, we don't, back I, to... I, I wish we could bring back music videos for that. That'd be great. Like, just to right? have just, just to have these, like, full-blown production music videos for these songs would be incredible. Oh, man, that would be sick. Like, Ragabomb from fucking... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> exactly. Dude, that one was awesome, too, right there. That, that song even ended up getting featured on Fallout. Yep. Um, well, I mean, you even you even have those songs in or not Paul out c cinematic movies now. I mean, you have uh, you have that in Deadpool too. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, literally, <laughs> dubs. Yeah, like, I love dead. dubstep. It just goes right in the Skrillex. <laughs> oh man, oh man, good shit. So, so speaking back to like you know, it's a new era for DJs and producers to get their stuff out there, and we talked about like how you got to kind of have to make content. Like, what are your ways? Like whenever you're talking to your team about these ideas of like getting more into like making content and whatnot, what ideas or tips or tricks have they taught you that you feel comfortable teaching us? You know it's, what I mean? just, it's just consistency. Like whatever you can think of, like, like, don't worry about being cringy. Don't worry about, you know, what people may think. Just be real and true to yourself when you're making this content. Like, you know, you, you want to tell a story of what your brand is. So, you know, if, for instance, you know, with Lullaby, you know, you can literally just have yourself sleeping and then, you know, yeah. pull out, you know, a story, you know, like yep. it, just be true to yourself. Don't worry about what other people think. Just have fun with this. At the end of the day, have fun with what you're doing. Have fun with what you're making. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What are, um, so, so you're an FL producer, right? Correct. Gotcha. Have you ever tried any other DAW prior to that or was it always just FL? So I started strictly, well, actually that's a lie. So I started originally on GarageBand. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so I started doing music at like 10, 11 years old. So I used to do guitar lessons. And I used to play the trumpet and I used to take classes at um, Archbishop Bryan High School in Philly. So it was like a weekend program, but the the teacher had us go in GarageBand and learn different things in GarageBand. So I really started on that. And then once I got into DJing, I picked up FL Studio because everybody else was doing FL, uh, at least around me. So I watched how they did it. And then I went into doing F uh, free loops from there. I tried getting into Ableton. I tried doing the other things. It just didn't work out for me. FL has always been the easiest one for me. Hey, it happens, man. It happens. So, so we are down to the last 10 minutes of our podcast. 
Okay. Um, so with these remaining minutes, what I like to do with my guest is I like to play a track that they had sent me to kind of give the uh give the audience a little like taste of of who this this magnificent person is kind of thing, right? Uh, um, but um, yeah, so we're gonna play the track. Uh, I think the one that you sent me two actually. So one yeah, is so. the song that you had just released with the Electro Step Network, clearly. Yes. Um, and then the other one is a up and coming uh, track that isn't out yet. It's actually unreleased. Um, and we're gonna get a little sample of that here in just a moment too. Um, which one do you want to play out first? Uh, I would do clearly first. Shout out clearly. Electro Step Network. Shout out Electro Step. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my. Give me one second. Let me share my screen here in just a moment. Get that up. Okay. And then go here, and then here, and then do, 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 do optimize, share sound. Okay, can you see this? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm gonna play maybe right here. Uh -huh. I'll go a little further. Yeah. Right there. So a nice little clip of this one. You guys can get this track out of Electro Step Network on SoundCloud and all other platforms as well. And then we got SOS. Now this one's gonna be a pretty cool one too. Do you think about right here? This would be a good spot to play it. Nah, I go a little further back. A little further back, like here. Mm, nope, nope, nope. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Other way, other way. Right there. Okay. I'm gonna stop it there so people will have to have wait to wait. It comes out. <laughs> have to wait. You have to wait. <laughs> Fuck you guys. You have to wait. <laughs> you may see it at the end of October, beginning of November, but it is coming out around that time. Hell Can't yeah. Can't say where yet, but it is coming out. Hell yeah. So we got like six minutes remaining over here. With these last six minutes, tell me about those tracks a little bit. What went into them? How is your like? process with them and then after that you know last words like shout outs and all that shit okay. well so clearly um clearly i made about a year and a half ago maybe yeah about a year and a half ago and um you know I, that was during a time of you know my life where you know i was like confused about a lot of things and you know music honestly saved me from a lot of stuff like you know that was my therapy for a long time so whatever emotion i was going through that's literally what i put in to fl so during that, you know, I just basically just let all my emotions out on that song. And, you know, it I've made something that is by far one of my favorite songs that I've ever made. Um, SOS originally used to be a collab and it it sat for a while and then it ended up just being just me and Donatella. Um, that was probably a, that song has been sitting for a very, very long time. Um, I want to say probably like two years. And it just got oh, to the wow. point where I'm like, I need to just put this out. So, you know, I'm happy that both these songs are now coming out especially clearly being out on electro step and then sos going to be coming out and the end of october and november nice hell yeah hell yeah okay um well um with that being said do you want to give a shout out to anybody in the crowd watching um yeah they said shout out, shout out electro step you know shout out you know the the edm dna people you know shout out lullaby and you know all the people that have you know step up and you know been there for me you know help me with you know the figment project that you know it's it's been a very long battle but we're still climbing we're still climbing up there amen, man. amen hell yeah well with that said ladies gentlemen and my fellow comrades 
Thanks again for coming out to another Lullaby Stories with your host, Lullaby, and today's, or this week's guest, Figment, <laughs> a.k.a. Chris, uh, a.k.a. Figgy. Uh, love this man. Thank you guys all for coming out. Make sure to check out um, all of our socials down below, as well as the track clearly down below. Leave a like, share, comment, do all the things. Run and it up. Again, run up those run numbers. Run it up. Exclusively on Electro Step Network. Peace, y'all.